When you plan for a trip and you're going for a particular destination to enjoy your vacations, you make sure that you don't forget anything which you want to carry along with you while you are on the trip or your vacation. And that's where you create a simple to-do list to make sure that you list down all the things which you want to carry along with you for this vacation. And the only reason you create this to-do list is to make sure that you don't forget them when you are on board. And that's where the same way in testing, we create the entry and exit criteria. So in this tutorial, we will be understanding what exactly entry and exit criteria are in testing and how that act as very helpful and vital step in order to make sure that what we have done and what need most to be done. and greetings for the day welcome back to another episode of testing in nutshell this is Nish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about the entry criteria and exit criteria in testing now first of all what exactly these criteria are it's just like a criteria which set up certain standards certain activities which need to be performed in order to start testing or stop testing respectively when we talk about entry criteria and exit criteria now the very first thing, what does it comprise of? When you talk about entry criteria and exit criteria, they consist of a checklist, which has various entities being marked as one of the parameter, which declares that if this activity is done, you can actually start with a particular activity of testing. Now, first of all, a checklist or this entry and exit criteria can be used at any point in the development lifecycle. It's just not limited to testing. It can be used for the entire project. It can be used for development lifecycle or design lifecycle or even testing lifecycle or probably for static testing like reviews or even for different test levels within testing. The main intention of having <clears throat> the main intention of having entry and exit criteria is to determine when to start something and when to stop something. For example, if we talk about entry criteria, it may include that whether the code is available to start with the testing, whether the environment is set up correctly and verified, whether all the requirements are converted into test cases, whether do we have valid set of data to evaluate the functionalities and lot many other things. At any point of time, respective to what you have created the entry criteria for, the entry criteria may vary and will be different. For example, the entry criteria of a review will be different than entry criteria of unit testing. Same way, unit testing entry criteria will be different than the entry criteria of performance testing. Well, similarly, on the other hand, we have exit criteria. Where exit criteria is to determine if you have done or performed the given activities and you are good to stop testing now. Now, when you talk about exit criteria, it may include, for example, the desired coverage, the desired number of defects which are still open, which is allowed and they are in the permitted limit. The budget allocated for testing, if you run out of that, you have to exit, you know, unfortunately. You talk about the time, the schedule which is allocated for you. You keep on monitoring such things. What about residual risk, that which is in the agreed limit, the coverage which you have achieved. So there are many such things which will determine whether you have completed what you were supposed to complete before you can exit or stop testing. So exit criteria from time to time will be evaluated to see that how much we have worked and how much more we need to work in order to meet the exit criteria to stop testing. Well, at the same time, there are a few more other things which you can talk about. Like entry and exit criteria acts as a milestone as well. The entry criteria will determine that at least the activities which were supposed to be done before this are completed and then you can start with the next phase of it. Similarly, the exit criteria will act like just not a checklist, but also a milestone to determine that the team has to done whatever they were supposed to do before stopping the testing. And all are of these are agreed as per the agreement and the contracts. And then you finally stop testing and conclude your work. So yes, today we understood that what exactly entry and exit criteria is, and how exactly they can add more value and definitely to assure that 
you have not forgotten anything before starting a particular phase or process within the life cycle of development. So this is where we understand that what exactly the role of the entry and exit criteria is and you do understand how exactly to manage them now. So that's all from this particular episode team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to answer your queries and respond to them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.